So really what I'm going to show you today is that sort of movement forward, if you like, that sort of taking your ideas to the next level, um, but also in terms of looking at it from a, a, an evaluative point of view and reflecting on what you've done, so looking back as well as going forward. So really a lot of the work that you'll see in, in this talk has come from, from my experience and, and from what I've done in, in the past, which has been about evaluating. Um, and, and coming from the field of design, I think that, that that area is really about not just creating new things, but also looking back at what you've done to learn and develop and move forward from that. Um, so it's about learning from your ideas, going forward, but also reflection as well, and understanding the details behind what you've done. So not just that it's successful, but why is it successful? And what elements can you improve even if it was really good? So to show you that, what I thought I'd do is show you one particular example. Okay? And it's an example which I think we can all relate to. It's an example that we all know about. Um, and it's an example we've all got very detailed experience on. So I want you to think about housing. And I want you to think about your own house. Think about it in terms of it being your own home. Okay? Now if you think about that, your home actually represents quite a lot. If you think about what your home actually means for you, think about what it represents, what it offers, what it does. Actually, your home is more than just a shelter. It's more than just a roof over your head. Okay? And if we think about the extreme situation, we can see that we don't just lose that roof over our head, we actually lose a lot more stuff. Okay? We might lose the personal, the emotional, the social elements as well. So houses actually have a very good value beyond just a practical value. Okay? And in that sense, what we start to think about is that a house is actually they, a place that we grow and develop in ourselves or our families grow and develop. It's a sense of space and a sense of privacy. It's also a place to show off. It's a place that you show at Christmas, probably the best time to show off to your friends and family. But also houses are the biggest investment that we'll ever make, generally. Okay? So houses in all manner of areas are actually very important to us. Now, houses, though, in that field are actually changing. And particularly in the UK context, the house is becoming um, a different field to just those emotional, social, and practical things. Houses are seen as one of the biggest polluters, or uh, extreme area of pollution within the UK culture, particularly, uh, where we're contributing almost a third of our carbon emissions just by what we burn and what we use in our homes. So houses are changing, and we're starting to see areas like this one, where the house design is developing beyond just creating that shelter and that roof over our heads. And what we're starting to see is those houses and those ideas, new technologies are coming about to create our houses to be more sustainable, more energy efficient, and use those resources in a better way. And they're coming into areas that we can all buy into now, so they're not just the extreme um, exemplar research projects that we can see here at University of Nottingham, but actually things that we can all do and we can all buy into. So mainstream developers, are actually creating these things, but we can also do that with our own homes by adding on technologies, <coughs> adding on new products, putting the new PVs on the roof, or having wind turbines as well. So there's lots of new innovations and new technologies that are happening within the housing field that we can all adopt. But what we have to think about is whilst we're changing the design of our homes, even by just adding a new technology into it, we're actually starting to have um, a different relationship with that house. And it is still the practical, functional shelter over our, house, uh, our, head, our heads. It is still the emotional relationship that we had. But now it's becoming more functional in the sense of having to serve this sustainability purpose. So housing is very much changing. And our relationship with housing is also changing. So a lot of the work that I've been doing, certainly quite recently, has been looking at that issue, looking at how houses are functionally serving purpose, but also emotionally and so, are socially serving a purpose. And think about it in terms of what are we creating, certainly in design, what are we designing in our homes? Are we designing something that's a sustainable system, that's got lots of technologies that work really well, or are we also designing a house for people to live in, and a home for us to all to develop into? So I've looked at a number of different areas in housing, from mainstream development projects, such as this one, uh, which is a sustainable development, sustainable houses that we can buy. And I've also looked at sort of large-scale uh, large uh, houses which are very expensive, but one-offs. So this is an example of a one-off house that somebody's decided to design. It's um, a bit like the grand designs objective, so the, the sort of big houses that we all want to ideally have that are also sustainably driven. And I've looked at those in terms of the designers and the architects that have designed them, but also the homeowners, and trying to understand their experience of living 
in those houses. So I've an, analysed and, and assessed really two areas. The area of designing and developing those and, and understanding and reflecting on what that's all about, as well as understanding what it's like to actually live there. And that's really where I come back to this point about evaluating something, that if we're evaluating all these really good ideas, in this case, in sustainable technologies or innovations or designs, if we're evaluating all of those ideas, we're not just evaluating whether they work very well, whether they perform or whether they're sustainable or efficient. We also need to evaluate whether they are good for the people that actually live in those, those, those houses. So within that work, I found out a lot of different areas, which I think is quite useful to show you how rich we can actually get this information. So when I analysed the area of design and looked at architects and designers and developers and planners and all sorts of people who were involved in creating these wonderful houses, I analysed what were they doing, what were their decisions, what was driving that focus. And often the focus was driven by the innovation itself, by the new technology or the new innovation that was coming about. They were very interested in trying to promote those areas and really put them at the heart of the design. But actually what was quite negative in a way was that whilst they were very interested in using and adopting those in the, in the designs themselves, they weren't really looking as hard at actually how people lived in the houses. So it was there, they were trying to make a house that could be lived in, but it wasn't necessarily in terms of it being homely as such. It was much more about trying to create a house that you could practically live in and you could practically use these technologies but it didn't necessarily create a homely environment. That wasn't the focus of what they were designing. Now, when you then put that into context of the people actually living in the spaces, there was an interesting parallel, that actually there was a huge demand, it's common sense in a way, I suppose, there was a huge demand from those homeowners to have not just a house that worked and performed and did the jobs, but also a house that was quite homely and had a homely feel. And these were people that had been living in these houses for a number of years now, so two years. They've, they've managed to develop and use this house to its extent, if you like. Um, and they really wanted a more homely feel to that environment. And often, in some cases, there was some distinct areas where homeliness really wasn't there. And they really wanted to be able to achieve that. So, for example, they wanted to be able to knock a wall down to make the space better for them. Or they wanted to be able to paint the walls and change the carpets and curtains and they felt restricted from being able to do that because these designs were so special, because they saw them as a sort of sustainable system, and they felt that if they started to change things, then they might be changing the system, they might be changing its sustainable emphasis. It might not perform as well as it should have done. So what they actually found was that, that, that this, this um, emphasis on the innovations was actually restricting people from creating the homely space that they really wanted to do, to personalise that design to what they wanted, their needs or their desires. However, alongside that, not to be too negative, not to make this too, too much of a bad thing, um, there were some really interesting homely aspects that came out as well. In actual fact, linked to the technologies and innovations that were in there at the heart of it. There were some hidden values, if you like, to those technologies, where in some cases they actually offered homeliness in their own right. So whilst the PVs and the uh, mechanical heat ventilation and the insulation, all those sort of sustainable technologies were there, they were there to serve a purpose, but they actually created a homely feel for some people as well. Now in that case, a, a good example would be um, a, a sustainable technology which actually was more convenient for you to do what you wanted to do. So um, um, the example of the mechanical heat ventilation system is where you can get fresh air coming into your house if you've got such tight insulation, you might feel slightly constricted. So it allows fresh air and good quality air to come into the environment. Now that provided the level of convenience and a level of comfort for so lots of people. And that convenience and that comfort enhanced their living experience and it was noticeable to these homeowners. They actually really loved that feature within the house. And in fact, a lot of people would say that they couldn't live without it. It was something if they had to go to a conventional house, they felt that that, that would really be a feature that they would miss. So that particular technology was often highlighted um, in these designs as something that was creating a really homely feel, something really warm and exciting. And alongside that were other examples where actually there was a better convenience, a better level of comfort that was making these houses sometimes more homely. Now that wasn't necessarily something that was directed in the design process. That was just something that they'd experienced and they'd enjoyed from living in these spaces. But having that evaluation of both those areas actually meant that we could really understand that 
sort of hidden value, if you like, to the technology. And we can then enhance and develop that as we go along, as we create those technologies into a new realm. So from a lot of the work that I've sort of done in that area, and actually outside of this, just general field work that I've, I've looked into, I, I've noticed that there is an area in which we're almost doing a cycle process. And I think we can see it from what we've seen today, actually, that we have these really great ideas, and we're even on the start of the great ideas, or we're developing those ideas. We're at the initial stages, where you can sort of see on the left here, the sort of exploration stages of looking into something, where it's really exciting and new and innovative, and we can do all sorts of things. We can come up with these great concepts, but we have to go forward from there. We can't stop. And I think we've seen that certainly in the early part of today. Once we get that really good idea, we kind of come round the cycle, and we come to what we need to do. We need to deliver on that. We've got an idea, and we need to actually put it into practice. We need to get the details together and develop those details and actually get it either to work or to, to function or to do what it's supposed to do. So we're developing that innovation and that idea. Now, from that, we finally get something. In this case, we've got all these great technologies and new innovations, a whole new house system. So we've got this product, if you like, that's out there. Somebody adopts it, somebody uses it. In this case, homeowners live in it. And in that sense, we're kind of putting it out into market. It's there, and we need to look at it. Now, my argument is really this sort of yellow stage that you see at the top, which is where we need to reflect on that thing that's gone out there. We need to learn from it and understand all those details that I've just shown you in that one example. We need to understand how it's being used from all sorts of different perspectives. And different perspectives will have different reasonings for why things happened. So we need to get to the nitty gritty, if you like, of the details to really know what's going on. In that reflective area, in those sort of evaluations on reflections on what's happened, we don't just get those details. We might then get more ideas. We might spur on some new things or new ways of thinking. And in that, we start the cycle again. We might do some more explanations, come up with new innovations, or even just develop what we've already looked at. So really what we've seen, I think hopefully today particularly, we've seen is this sort of cycle of not just innovative, great new things, but just going through and actually developing, then evaluating, and then starting it all again. And I think that's where I'd really sort of come to a conclusion on all of this, really, that we are, in effect, doing what we all maybe know about in the sense of being at common sense. We are reflecting on what we've done, reflecting on both the actions that we're doing, but also reflecting on the thinking behind all of this. And to do that, we then get the detail and the understanding of that detail to be able to move forward. And that's really what evaluation is about, the sense of being able to move forward. And in some cases, we might find things that we already expected, but in other cases, there might be some unexpected little hidden gems, if you like, of things that we never, not, never thought were there, something that was surprising. And in that, we might even go further. So we're developing throughout all of that. But alongside that, I think the other thing I would sort of finish on today is this idea that we are almost developing from that. And we're thinking about it in a broader context, that we don't just take the standard things to evaluate. So my example with sustainable housing would have been that we could have just taken, let's evaluate that technology and see if it worked. Let's pragmatically and practically check whether people are doing the things right or not. Now, if I'd just looked at that one detail, I'd have missed out all of those other hidden values that we wouldn't have understood. So actually, within evaluation, we need to think very broadly. It might be about the social context of stuff. It might be about technically how things work. But it might actually be a mix between the two. And by mixing those things up, we actually get the breadth and the depth of stuff to be able to learn from, and not just the singular details. So really, I suppose, on that last point, it's about taking all of the information that you can get and understanding it in a lot of detail. So hopefully that's uh, finished up for today, I think, more than anything. Thank you very much. <laughs>